Hi, David Paul here. Um, I'm back at uh, Port Porlock Weir, and um, I'm just having a, a last video of the place because the tide is in, and uh, good opportunity to see the boat with the tide in. So, anyway, this is the scene that I'm in. That's that hotel across there. And that thing that sells pizzas, I don't know what it is, a hotel or, or what, but that's the big deal around here, this one pizza thing. Now, what happened is, I've been up to um, Porlock, the village, to go and get some supplies. And I've got all of this stuff. Um, I've been sleeping on the boat with no um, duvets or bedding of, of any kind. So I've gone and bought this thing, a sleeping bag, this double sleeping bag, which is going to keep me nice and warm, loaded up ready with water, and a load of um, various types of food, cans in particular, um, which is just weighs a ton. I walked all the way there, and I've had to carry this all the way back, because uh, I missed the last bus. That, that thing stops about five o'clock at night, crazy. Anyway, um, I got back and this is what I find. The, uh, the pageant is surrounded by water and I don't have a dinghy to get to her. Now we're in a situation here of a, a retreating tide. So what I'm going to do, I think the tide's about half away. Well, well certainly a bit away. Um, so therefore... All I gotta do is wait for it to go out. So I'm gonna retreat to the pub or just sit around here, one of the two, and um, just wait for this tide to go so that I can um, mooch up and climb onto my boat. So there she is in the water. And then you can see all those beautiful pageant curves. Gorgeous boat. So I was going to do a video of the interior, but I think by the time I get on that boat, I won't be able to do that because it'll be getting dark. Um, I bought an oil lamp because I've got no heating in the boat and uh, I've been really freezing. So I reckon if I put this, this oil lamp on, maybe, maybe it'll just keep me warm at night or just provide just enough heat to keep me from freezing to death. Plus I've got this new sleeping bag which uh, hopefully is going to help matters. As I'm watching this, I can actually see she seems to be getting closer and closer to the edge there. There's a sort of boundary there, like a wooden log edge to the, uh, I don't know, sunken wharf or whatever it is. And as the tide goes out, she just creeps forward, settles down, just in the perfect position to climb aboard. So I said last night, so there's the there's the beer, there's the harbour. And a tiny little harbour. The waves are breaking just at the, the harbour entrance there. I could theoretically probably get out of here at the minute. I don't want to. Uh, I can't travel at night, I don't have any lights. But in the far distance there, you might see a, another coastline on the opposite side. And that is the coastline of South Wales, and this is the Bristol Channel. So, I've I've had a good chance to uh, to see the lie of the land as I've walked along towards Porlock, and I can see that it doesn't seem too bad actually. Um, you know, I was thinking this this channel is enormous, uh, but you can't actually see both sides at the same time. And as I, as I progress up it, it'll get narrower and narrower and uh, become more familiar, more like a, like a river than being out in the open sea. So there you go. I've yet to do an interior video, probably a day or two for that because um, uh, I'm going to be really busy tomorrow. What I'm, what I'm planning to do, I'm going to um, wait until about five o'clock in the morning and I'm going to go out on um, high tide 
So I'll have enough to get me out of that entrance there. And then I'm going to set off just as the light is, uh, the dawn's breaking. Um, because I, I can't travel if it's still dark because I don't have navigation lights and things. So I'll set out just as the, the light is coming up and I'm visible and then head off and that's going to, I've calculated that's going to give me between sun, sunrise and sunset about 16 hours of travel time because uh, remember this is England, we get longer days in the summer so 16 hours of travel time and you never know, um, I might get up the uh, I might get up the Bristol Channel all the way to Bristol but if you have a look at the the way this coastline is constructed uh, what you've got you've got these bays like this okay so if I go out at high tide then what happens is the tide will turn against me um, so it's turning against me and uh, so I'm having to, having to battle against the tide well what you do you can do a trick if it works it doesn't work everywhere but you can have a go which is to head into the shallower waters like these and hop across these bays point to point and keep out of the deep water in the middle there and therefore um, what you get in the shallow areas is a lot of drag which causes the currents to slow down uh, or even sometimes go in a circle in the direction that you want them to go so they're actually helping you and uh, you can spin from one bay to another so as you're doing this you're not making very good progress but then what happens is uh, once the tide t changes in your favour, you head out into the middle of the can into the middle of the channel there, and then just ride the the tide, uh, sail as fast as you can on top of the tide. You can do things like eleven knots and stuff, you know, which is unheard of for a boat this size. There's another shot of the pageant. Anyway, I must um, put one tag this westerly pageant because there are so few so few videos on the internet about Wesley pageants, just ones for sale uh, where they just give you a few flashes inside but there's no idea of scale or why this is a good boat or anything like that but she's looking gorgeous there she's so cute so I'm going to leave it at that and then tomorrow we set sail and that's the end of uh, Porlock, I don't think I'll be coming back here it's a very tough place to walk around It's the hills here are really hot and hard and um, I'm kind of exhausted so it's an early night tonight and then early start bye